Hey guys, okay, part two. So, I hauled this generator uh, out of the shed. This is the one that had that weird, um, that weird effect on the oscilloscope at the zero crossing. Um, I actually hooked up to the scope. I told the scope that the probes were at 10x and the peak to peak voltage was crazy high. It was like 700 plus volts. Um, it was reading at like 300 hertz. I'll hook the scope up again in a minute and just show you guys, but yeah, so I decided to haul it in here. So um, no Darwin Awards today. I'll open this garage door. I'll run it. Um, figure all the things worth dying for. A portable generator is not one of them. Uh, I got the back of the gen, head, uh, the gen head pulled apart. So I took this plastic cover up here. It's just a couple of nuts that hold on. I think it's four, I don't know, five or seven millimeter nuts. Or bolts rather. So here, not much going on. You have your rotor shaft. The ball bearing that holds it here. The other side of the of the generator shaft is actually tapered into the crankshaft, so there's only one bearing. Um, you have here you have well here you have your brush holders right here, and up here you have your your AVR. And this is where I think the problem is. And you can see just yanking it out. I don't see any obvious problems, but this thing is pretty heavily potted with epoxy. I'm assuming for uh, you know dust and water egress ingress. So just to protect it. So if there is a failure, there could be a failure underneath that epoxy that we can't see. I don't see any obviously bad capacitors or anything that might suggest there's something wrong with it, but I have another one on order and this part number has been changed like five or six times. So I'm guessing these things are, have been problematic. So that part should be here today. Uh, but I thought I would plug in the scope and just kind of show you guys what I was seeing with the scope set up correctly for once. Now, courtesy of Parts Tree, there is a, here's a schematic of the power head here. So you notice here you have your voltage regulator, which I refer to as the AVR. You have your DPE windings, which is the displaced field excitation windings. And then you have your field, which is the brushes. So this thing will use, I believe, the DPE windings to power the voltage regulator. And the voltage regulator will monitor the output voltage across here, and it will modulate how much energy it puts through this field right here which uh, and just thinking about how these things work there's a rotor inside there with windings on there you can see it deep inside there maybe sort of and how that works is that avr will send a voltage to that those rotor windings and that when that's spinning really fast that induces a voltage in the stator windings that's what gives you your power so really this avr is responsible for this thing producing power. Um, and I would hope if it is producing power, the quality of said power. So what we're gonna do is I'm gonna hook the scope up um, to that suicide cord I hooked up last time. I'm gonna have the, the, the scope set on 10X. I'm gonna keep the probe on 10X so you'll have all that, you'll have like a good visual of what's going on, which you didn't have last time. OK, 
Okay, hopefully you guys heard me talking. The hope is that when the new AVR is installed, that curve will clean up quite a bit and those peak to peaks will, or that I guess that peak to peak of over 700 volts will disappear. And that weird uh, artifact you saw, and I, I took a screenshot of it, so hopefully you guys will see that. Uh, hopefully that'll disappear as well. So we'll resume when the AVR gets here. Turning that fan off and on or plugging it in didn't really seem to affect the waveform. Uh, unfortunately, I don't really have like heaters or anything or some kind of very linear load or resistive load. All I have are non-linear loads like motors, and, but that's the best we can do. So at least we know that's not a problem with it only unloaded. Granted, a little fan isn't a whole lot of load. That's probably 150 watts out of 8,000, but it's something. So it's not some kind of like unloaded only problem. All right, with the magic of video editing, or not really video editing, just video, our new AVR is here. Let's take it out of the box and see what it looks like. And of course they taped it together. Tape doesn't scare me. Let's see what we got. Obviously it looks very different from the one that's in there. I'll take that out so you guys can see it side by side. Old, new. So now we have to pay attention to the the uh, wiring diagram, so we know how to wire this up. And obviously, it's different. So notice the terminals in the schematic are labeled. It's like one L, twenty two, two and six. So there should be some labels on the sides here. It's going to be hard for you guys to see on the camera, but look on this plastic edge here. Those terminals should be labeled. Let's take a look at the new one. They should be labeled as, as well. So there's, looks like either 1L or 11, 22. These go to the brushes. Let's see what we got on this side. 6 and 2. And that's pretty much it. So just kind of, again, they're really tiny lettering right there. Also take note of where the red and the black wires go on the brushes. So on, on this generator, the red is in front, black is in the back. And that's where these wires go. So red's gonna go towards the back of the generator, black's gonna go towards the front. So we'll unhook these one at a time, and we'll go from there. Okay, get the new one in. Old one in. Let's uh, crank it up and see what the waveform looks like. Looks much better.
hopefully you guys heard some of what I said in that video. Notice that the uh, the peak to peak voltage was much lower. Uh, it was it was like seven over 750 volts before. I think it was like 300 something now with about 100 and 120 RMS, which is what it should be. Notice the frequency came down off like 300 hertz down to about 61, which is what it should be unloaded. So that's perfect. Um, I ran that FFT function, you saw uh, there were far fewer harmonics. It's very difficult to measure them on a scope like this. It's not a very high-end scope. It's not designed for power quality measurements, but you could see that before there were like maybe 10 or 15 harmonics, and here there were maybe two or three, and they were much, much lower in, in magnitude as well. So overall, I think this was a successful repair. We don't see that oddity at zero volts anymore, where um, it kind of, or I guess not really zero volts, where it crosses the, the X axis. Um, so yeah, this was a successful repair. So if your generator is not producing any power, or if the uh, the power curve when plugged into a scope looks kind of strange, you've checked the windings, you, uh, the stator windings, the rotor windings, everything checks out, might want to go after that AVR. Um, that was about $63, I think, on walmart.com. Got it in a couple days. Um, again, I don't know exactly what they changed, but you can see the, the PCB design is totally different. Different components. Um, this one actually has a software version stamped on it in the back here. Not really sure who makes this, or I doubt it's a Briggs and Stratton part. They probably buy it from somewhere else because they're not an electronics company. So anyway, successful repair. I'm happy. Uh, I'm just going to button up some of these wires here, make sure that nothing gets caught in any of the uh, spinny, spinny components. Uh, we'll put it back together. All buttoned up. And uh, look at that. What did you know? Briggs and Stratton included instructions. I guess I should have read those, huh? I mean, there's nothing terribly shocking in here. Only they said to adjust the no load engine speed between 62 and 62 and a half hertz, which is between 3720 and 3750 RPMs at no load. Apply a load, then recheck. I mean, all right. I think we're fine. Um, now, if you're rotor windings lost their their uh, residual charge or the residual magnetism uh, they give you a procedure on flashing uh, the field with a 12 volt battery back to the brushes anyway if you like this video please subscribe and stay safe i apologize profusely for the quality of the audio in that recording but uh, i don't have a very good mic and obviously the generator kind of but, but anyway so this is just to kind of recap what we saw and what we did so Again, with the scope set up properly uh, on 10X, you notice our peak, our peak to peak volts before doing anything was uh, 788 volts. RMS is 115, a little low, but not crazy low, but most the frequency is 307 hertz. It should be about 61, 62 hertz. Um, probably other things here to call out, but those are the, the three that jump out of me right away. And obviously, you can see our defect crossing the X axis right here. FFT function, which you can use to measure total harmonic distortion, less than 5% for electronics, but uh, I don't have an easy way of measuring this. The scope isn't really meant to, to capture power harmonics, but you can see here there's a harmonic here, harmonic here, 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 uh, maybe the other one here, so a lot going on here, a lot of noise in this generator. Here's a, a zoom in on the defect. Again, crossing the x-axis, so you see, come up, and we zoom down, come back up, and we zoom down, come back up, and we zoom down. And the other phase is the exact opposite, which come up, and zoom up, come up, zoom up, and so on. And again, uh, I suspect that this was a problem with the ABR because I owned the bigger windings, the rubber windings, everything checked out okay. I replaced the ABR, like, well, sorry, this is zoomed out, looking at the whole waveform every three, three periods. And after we replaced the ABR, this is the waveform now. You notice right away there's fewer harmonics. There's a harmonic here, 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 and maybe here, but I think that's pushing it. I notice that defect crossing the X axis is completely gone. Our frequency is 61.8 hertz, which is perfect for the loaded tenor. The RMS voltage is of 117, and I think peak to peak. So big difference. Um, I don't have a really, I don't have really another way to measure the impact. Such as a laptop or a you know, fan, I, I don't really want to risk plugging in, didn't want to risk plugging anything into that generator with that known problem. Uh, but now this is a 
pretty good waveform for a portable generator, quite honestly. I think it's better than the Black Max that we measured in the, the previous video, definitely better than the Coleman. Um, so the under three generators, I think it's pretty good. Right? The 8000 with, uh, with a fixed ADR is probably the best one. I guess not a fix, but a, a correctly operated. All right, well, I hope this was helpful. If you guys run into a similar issue with your generator, like if you plug in a kilowatt or a multimeter, you can see the frequency through the roof. Um, you might want to look at the ABR if your generator has one. Hope you found this video helpful. If you did, subscribe and stay safe.